I'm Michael Bain, and as always, welcome to Triggered, coming to you from Dragon House Studios, the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains, where we are on day 7,287 of our house arrest from the people in Colorado who don't have the brains of frogs. But aside from that, I promised you last week we'd do a little bit of talking about this Charter Arms Pit Bull. But first, I want to take a moment to give you an absolute overt plug, big plug. This is from my friend Greg Elifritz. He is a law enforcement officer, easily one of the finest trainers in the United States. And he spent years compiling a book on how to travel safely in really dangerous places. And Greg is really good at that. Greg is a chronic traveler. He's been around the world any numerous uh, number of times. The picture of him on the back cover is him with a bunch of penguins, which Greg, really, you need better friends. I'm not with you on penguins, brother. But I love to travel, and I have traveled a lot. I've been around the world a lot uh, in lots of different countries. And the thing is, there are tricks that you need to know before you travel internationally, especially if you travel in places where you may well have some risk. And the smartest thing you can do is educate yourself before you leave. And this is probably the best book in the world for doing that because Greg understands dangerous places and dangerous situations. But Greg loves to travel so much that he knows how to get you through it. So if you're thinking of taking a trip or you're thinking to go to New York City, whatever for, you might want to read this book first. It's an excellent, excellent job. So, oh, and don't drink the water. Never, ever drink the water. Last week we talked about the Charter Arms Pit Bull series of revolvers. There's a lot of interest recently in revolvers that use cartridges that are for, typically for semi-autos, that is rimless cartridges. Obviously, in a normal revolver, the rim of the cartridge, you drop it in the cylinder, the rim of the cartridge holds it in place. With a rimless round, obviously, like the 9mm, there isn't a rim to hold it in place. And you have to figure out a way to make it stay. So we'll talk about this a little bit more expansively in a moment, but there are two ways. Count them. One is the moon clip. Everybody knows what a moon clip is, right? Essentially, this is where rimless rounds are clipped into a spring steel circular or half circle or even just two cartridge device for holding the cartridge and then the device itself is dropped into the gun. This is Ruger GP100 in 10 millimeter. It's really easy to see that that's how it goes. You just got don't drop it in, drive it out. Goes in, goes out, makes it easy to reload. This is my own personal small carry gun. It is a Ruger LCR in 9mm, and I use it with these 9mm rounds that go in. No big deal. They're all Hornady rounds, by the way. And to me, it's better than a speed loader, much better than a speed loader. It's faster than a speed loader. The drawback is always that it is more fragile than a speed loader. It means that in order for you to shoot the gun, a revolver, with a semi-auto cartridge, it's not enough to drop the round in there. Now, it's supposed to work sometimes, and sometimes it will. Ideas that inside the cylinder of the round will headspace on the very edge of the case. Um, I'm sure that happens once or twice in a millennia. Uh, generally, what will happen is the round will go just a little bit too deep, and it won't fire. So moon clips came about, uh, gosh, right before World War I. Uh, at that point, the country was going to the 1911. And everybody knew that 1911 was great. They couldn't make them fast enough. So they went to Sm Colton Smith and Wesson and said, can you figure out a way to make a revolver work with 45 ACP? And they came up with this gun, which you've probably seen a couple of million times. This is a 1917 Smith and Wesson. This is mine. I didn't cut it. Somebody else did all the cut work on it. It is probably the best big bore snubby I have ever seen. I would love to know who cut it. But it is designed for either moon clips or those 45 auto rim cartridges, that is 45 ACP cartridges with a rim, but a fat rim to take up this extra room back here 
in the back of the cylinder. So a lot of talk. Doesn't have anything to do with the pit bull at all. What Charter Arms did was create a system for using a rimless cartridge. That would be a 9mm or a 40 Smith & Wesson or a 45 ACP that did not involve moon clips. Instead, it involves a really interesting itsy bitsy spring. Watch this. I want to put this 9mm round in this revolver. So what I do is I take it, I put it right there and push. You got to do a little juggle sometimes right there, poof, and it goes in. You're like, well, it doesn't need a moon clip. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't need a moon clip to come out, although gravity is very helpful on that. I'm going to show you here just a second what is actually happening. If you can see, there's the star. I push out on the star, the ejector star. And inside of the star is a witsy bitsy spring. This is a small loaded spring. And it's chamfered a little bit on the top. So the idea is that when you go to load the revolver, you can push and overcome, as you saw me do just there, you can push and overcome the resistance of the spring. If, if the spring gives you the teeniest bit trouble, all I got to do is pop the star out just a little, push in, push there. And that spring serves to allow you to basically eject the round as well. Slam the ejector, the round will come out. What you don't want to do, by the way, is fight gravity. If you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, will it come out? Will it come out? It might. On the other hand, it might not. Um, because gravity is kind of working against you there. But anyway, so I, have this, I got this gun a long time ago. And we shot it, and I, I thought, so with an interest in 9mm pistols coming back, I pulled this gun out of the safe, and I started putting a lot of different rounds through it. When we come back, we're going to talk about how that went. This week's Triggered is brought to you by Ammo Man. Now offering $10 off any order of $150 or more with the promo code TRIGGERED. Tandem Cross, making good guns even better. Lipsies and their wonderful Guns of the Month. Lucid Optics, on target, under budget. And Franklin Armory, creating some of the most innovative guns in America. Welcome back to Triggered and spending a little bit of time with the Charter Arms Pitbull 9mm revolver. I recall a decade ago, whenever that I actually got this gun, something came up, I was doing a lot of shooting with it, I didn't get a chance to really kind of finish up the testing. So I've started doing that. A couple of things that I found out. It works. The system works. Sometimes there are rounds and they tend to be nickel plated rounds that have a little bit of different surface adhesion and they're going to bind sometimes a little bit. It depends on the rounds. I did as I typically do is just shoot a bunch of different rounds through it and as I shot more different rounds through it it's what I would say settled in. You can say it broke in, you can say any of that. But I found with the, my, the rounds that I use the most, my go-to rounds, either the, the Hornady Critical uh, Duty rounds for self-defense or the Federal Match, Syntac Match Ammunition, I had zero problems with the gun. That includes loading, ejecting, any of those problems. And I would like to point out that after about 200 dry fires, maybe 300 dry fires, sitting in my office like a crazy person, clicking the gun, the notorious Charter Arms trigger became a really pretty nice trigger. A lot of gunsmiths look at a Charter Arms, they really do not like doing trigger jobs on them, it's a little tough inside there, but there's really no reason to. This revolver works and works well. It's somewhere between a snub, traditional snub, let's call this LCR, a baseline traditional snubby size, chunk. You can see it's a little bit bigger. And it's obviously a lot smaller than the larger frame. This is Smith & Wesson in frame, large frame. You can see the difference in size right there between that the, the charter and the in frame. Um, it's a little bit like the whole like, you know, three pigs thing. Sooner or later you get it just roughly about right. You can see it's slightly smaller than a Ruger, Ruger GP100, which is roughly L-frame in Smith & Wesson talk. So it's a little bit of a larger gun, 
But one of the advantages of that that I found is that the recoil gets soaked up pretty easily. And Charter Arms always had some pretty good grips on their guns. But the recoil gets soaked up. You say, well, 9mm doesn't have that much recoil anyway. Yeah, it does. Uh, shoot my LCR. I'll take you out. You can go ahead and shoot it. And after a couple of times, you'll go, do you have any 38 specials? Um, but to me, this is a viable size gun. It is not a pocket pistol. But on the other hand, it pretty much disappears on your belt. I was able to find a couple of holsters designed for Smith & Wesson K-frame revolvers that fit it perfectly. Uh, especially if you got a lot of 9mm around, your competition shooter, your, your self-defense ammo is 9mm. The, the Pit Bull is a pretty interesting choice. Now right now, the Pit Bull version has five shots. This one has six shots because it's a very early version. I would like to see them go back to six shots. Six shots, nine millimeters is a good thing. So anyway, the Charter Arms Pit Bull has proven to be a really solid little gun, a gun that I would not, not hesitate to carry. I'm probably going to paint uh, the, uh, the front sight like electric pink or mauve or something like that because I have old eyes. But definitely, I mean, two thumbs up and a wiggle of my butt for the Charter Arms Pit Bull 9mm. And hey, through the magic of television, when we come back, you're going to see something different. Well, this may be the coolest rifle in the world, certainly the coolest 22 rimfire in the world. It is a Volkortsen Summit, and it's something that I'm going to be working with now through the summer all the way into the fall and hopefully into October when we get to the Rimfire Challenge Shooting Association World Championships in Fort Smith, Arkansas, the old Fort Gun Club. You're looking at this right now and you're going like, that's the weirdest 1022 I've ever seen. What is this Rube Goldberg attachment here? Well, that's because it's not a 1022. It's not a semi-auto. It is a bolt action rifle. This is the bolt knob. Pull here, pulls the bolt back. So what happens? You come back here, click, locks the bolt in. Pull the trigger, work the bolt. Now, why would you do this? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. And I know every one of you flinch when I try fire to 22. Well, I'm pretty sure we can get through a couple of them. You don't want to do a thousand of them a day. The idea comes from biathlon, because biathlon shooters, uh, by the rules, shot mechanically operated rifles, and they wanted them to be as quick as you could. So you come in off skis, or you come in running in summer biathlon. I did some summer biathlon up at altitude. Boy, that really sucks. Uh, great shooter, lousy runner. Huh, even worse now. But you come back in and you've got your rifle here, you want to shoot it, and you need to cycle it as quickly as you can. And there is nothing as quick as a toggle bolt action. Because you're here, you're turning the trigger, you come back, chunk, 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 chunk. This can be operated very quickly. And then right there, you're back on the trigger, which is exactly what a biathlete wanted because you got to shoot rounds very, very quickly. So eventually, you saw toggle, these type toggle bolts on really expensive rifles. Uh, if you look at an average biathlon rifle, it's about the same as your average car. So they were, they were not uh, readily available. You would tell me shoots made one. Uh, I shot some actually that, that some biathlete friends of mine had. They're really nice guns. And for three, four, five thousand dollars, yes, they're, they're really excellent guns. But a few years back, Primary Weapons System, which is another manufacturer, came up with the idea of like, what if you could have an almost 1022? Essentially, what if you created a manually operated 1022 so that the bolt, rather than being moved back by firing the cartridge and then the recoil, a push, push against the spring, comes back, picks up another bolt out of the magazine. What if you just did it through the toggle link? And that would take care of, of, of running the bolt. So they came up with the idea. They did the, the primary work on it. It didn't go like super far because Volkortsen decided to make them an offer they couldn't refuse. And Volkortsen stepped in and began refining the, the PWS system. And the Summit rifles are, are really the, the ultimate, not kind of at this point, the ultimate refinement of these systems. I spec this rifle because I want to shoot it in competition. It has a stainless steel uh, receiver 
as opposed to an aluminum receiver. It's like, I think it was a 20, 30 MOA rail on top of it, because I'm thinking this is probably going to end up an NRL 22 gun, as well as the mechanical division of the Rimfire Challenge Shooting Association. A carbon fiber wrapped match barrel to keep the weight down. Obviously, it's set up to take a suppressor. Uh, this is one of Volkortz in stocks. I really like it because it's got a really good angle, just like the current Ruger competition stocks. It's got an excellent angle right here, so it fits really well. Now, for shooting it at plates, when I'm going to do this mechanical thing with a revolver, with a Ruger uh, GP100 22 revolver and this gun, it's going to run this sight. At least right now, that's what's in my head. I just don't have the, the mount for it. It's somewhere around here. Uh, typically, I'll use a Bobro general uh, release, easy on, easy off. This is, of course, a miniature rifle optic from Trigicon. It is a great sight. Uh, I've used it uh, hunting. I've used it in competition. And uh, it's, it's got a great window. And so, it, to me, that's, that's a great thing. When you're shooting plates up close like that, you need that big window. So, essentially, we're going to follow me with this gun from now until the Rimfire Challenge World Shooting Association's championships in October, and if, if, if they get COVIDed, or I don't know, burned out in a riot, there's some other really big matches on the East Coast for the Rimfire Challenge. I'll be going in that direction. So that's what I have for you today, and next week, we got some cool stuff on the way. I've been notified that it's at my FFL dealer, of course, if, if he isn't uh, destroyed in a nuclear holocaust brought about by Antifa. In any case, I'm Michael Bain. This is Triggered. You can find us on michaelbain.tv. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us in many places, including everest.com. So until next week, you guys stay safe out there. Stay inside. Always wear flame-proof clothing when you go out.